I'm really excited for this video because this is WWKD's first submission. If you don't know what WWKD is, it's my version of an advice column. What would Coco do? So let's get into it. Just as a reminder for this video and for any potential future submissions, the purpose of this series is for the person submitting their situation to get an unbiased, third-party, outside point of view. My goal is to be honest and something that is very important to me and that I want to promote on this channel is accountability. So my goal is to tell you what I think you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Obviously, I'm not a professional or anything like that, so you can take everything with a grain of salt. Keep in mind, I only have what is submitted to work with. So if there are details that are omitted and I don't have the full story, I can't do anything about it. I can only work with what's submitted to me. I have my computer over here with the submission pulled up, so I'm gonna read it off of here, but I will put a little screenshot pop up right here so you can read along with me. Hello, I am a girl in high school and I really need your advice. I went through a breakup with high friends, 10 friends, as I attract only high friends. And recently I got a close friend so that I don't stay alone, but she didn't respect me and didn't care about me. And it turned out that she is toxic too. I couldn't separate from her because it will end up completely alone. So I collapsed and wrote and lost myself trying not to lose her, but I gathered my courage and finally ended my relationship with her. But now I am really alone and I feel afraid of going back to school because I don't know how I will act alone. So are there any tips for activities that I do in the rest of time of school alone? My first piece of advice, girlfriend, and I mean this with love, please use punctuation next time because it is one giant run on sentence and I can only guess where the periods are supposed to go. I don't know if it's a generational thing, but um, periods. Please. Just to clarify some things, I don't understand what you mean by you went through a breakup with high friends, 10 friends, as you only attract high friends. I don't know if you mean a group of 10 friends or if you mean 10 as in like some sort of ranking. Like, is it a status thing? Like they were a bunch of cheerleaders, popular girls or something. I don't know if that's what you mean. I'm gonna go off of the assumption that you mean a group of 10, like, 10 people. The next thing is that you made a friend, the relationship wasn't what you thought it was gonna be, you were afraid to end that friendship because you didn't wanna be alone, you got the courage to end the relationship, but now you feel alone, you don't wanna go back to school, you wanna know what are some activities you can do while you finish up high school where you can be alone. Those are the bullet points I'm gonna be working off of. Let's start with the breakup with the group of 10 friends. Again, this is just my assumption because I'm not understanding what high friends mean. I don't know if that's some new lingo with the younger generation, but I'm just going off of the assumption that this is a group of 10 friends that you broke up with. I'm gonna start with, I'm sorry you were going through that or you went through that because a friend breakup, I don't know why people don't talk about this. I feel like in our society, we put such emphasis on romantic breakups and we don't put emphasis on friendship breakups. But the thing is, we're gonna go through more friendship breakups in our lives than romantic ones. Considering how universal the emotions tied to a friendship breakup are, I feel like it should be discussed more. Obviously, I don't know what the situation surrounding that breakup was, but it's hard accepting it, especially if it's a group of people that you grew up with, you know, elementary school, middle school, up until whatever grade you are in high school. It's rough because these are a group of people that you think are your friends. You've been through so much together all those years of grade school. I feel like most people end up thinking that this group of friends is forever. I used to think that about my group of high school friends because I grew up with them. I don't think that anymore. No shade to them. So it sounds like you then went and made friends with someone else after the friendship breakup, but it turns out she wasn't very respectful and you didn't feel like she cared about you. Now, because I'm looking at this from the outside, I am going to go off of the fact that this is one-sided. You say that she didn't respect you and she didn't care about you and that's valid. And you say that she's toxic. Without any example of what she was doing, I can't say one way or the other that she was toxic, 
but if that friendship wasn't serving you and it felt too one-sided, like you were giving in more effort, you cared about her more, then you're fully in your right to feel that way as well as if you feel like the best thing for you is to end the friendship, then that's the best thing. And I'm glad you found the courage to end that friendship because something that I've come to realize as I've gotten older is that so many people are afraid of being alone that they will endure disrespect, mistreatment from whoever it is, a significant other or friends. My thing is being alone is not a bad thing depending on how you use that time. Because when you're alone, it is a great time for self-reflection. It is a great time to look inside of yourself, analyze your own behaviors, your own actions, and really think about what did I do? What could I have done better? What could I have done differently? How did the other person perceive me? Why did they perceive me in that way? Why did they perceive my actions that way? You can do a lot of self-reflection and you can use that time and effort and energy to make yourself a better person. So being alone is not something to be afraid of. You should be afraid of wasting time and energy on a relationship that does not serve you in a healthy manner. And for that, I am proud of you for getting the courage to realize this person is not treating me the way I wanna be treated, this is not for me, and ending that relationship. That's a very hard thing to do, and you did it. So the next part about going back to school, because you did submit this a few weeks ago, I'm assuming this was like right before school started again. You asked for tips on activities that you can do alone while you finish out the rest of high school. I personally do not think finishing out high school alone is the best idea. There's a difference between accepting that you are alone, as in you don't have the type of friendship or relationship with others that you would like, versus intentionally ignoring everybody, purposely not trying to form any relationships and pushing people away. I do think there is a difference. I also think it's unhealthy because while there is room for growth and development in being alone, I don't think you should intentionally try and isolate yourself either. As for activities you could do, that is the whole point of all the different clubs and after school activities. I personally did color guard with the marching band because I had a dance background and I really love performing. I know schools are a lot different from when I was in high school and of course it depends on what area, what state you're in, but I would suggest just looking at the list of extracurriculars offered by your school and just pick one whatever sounds interesting to you. Because the thing is, as long as you show interest and you show that you are willing to learn, if you know nothing about the activity, whoever else is already in that club, activity, sport, whatever, they're gonna teach you. They're willing to teach you. When I joined Color Guard, I didn't know how to throw a flag, spin a rifle, spin a saber. They taught me how to do all of it. Was I good at saber and rifle? That's another story. I got through with my four years. If you pick something like a sport, like, I don't know, cross country, or you could do something like chess or debate, like they teach you, or they should at least. They should teach you how to participate so that you can be involved. And the point of all these clubs and activities in school is so that you have people who are also interested in that subject. You have someone to do it with. People who like to run can all join cross country and run together. If you like debate, you have a group of people that you could do, do debate with. Obviously, I feel like some of the sports, you kind of already have to have a background in that sport, but maybe there's like amateur league you can join. You know, people who just want to do it for fun. Like at my school, a lot of guys did ultimate frisbee. And it was just like a student run thing where they just got together after school certain days and the guys would just play ultimate frisbee. Another idea is if there is something you're interested in that's not being offered, find a teacher because I think you typically have to be sponsored by a teacher kind of thing, you know, like have someone supervise you after school. Find a teacher who's willing to work with you and start your own club. I don't know what's offered these days, but if there's something that you're interested in that's not being offered, get one started. Maybe the teacher you work with knows another student who's also interested in that and can connect you with them. You guys get this group started, start advertising, put out some flyers, and next thing you know it, you got like, I don't know, six people. Basically, I don't think you should be trying to spend the rest of your high school years alone. I don't think you should try to isolate yourself. I don't think you should be rejecting anyone that tries to be your friend. 
because it's just not healthy. Because here's the thing, there's gonna be plenty of times in the future where you're disappointed by a friendship or a relationship or just another person in general. Are you going to just isolate yourself for the rest of your life? I would hope not. You can think of this as practice, as a way to learn a lesson of how do I move forward? How do I move on? Something that I've had to come to terms with in finding friends is that you can't give up. You can't just stop trying to be friends with people because you're never going to find your people that way. You're never going to find your circle of friends that are meant to be there for you for the rest of your life. I'm not saying it's easy. It is most definitely hard. It is tiring. It can be emotionally exhausting. But once you find that friend or friends that are meant to be there for you for the rest of your life, that care about you and love you in the same way that you love and care about them, it is so rewarding. And when you find that person, you're going to be so grateful, so thankful that you didn't just cut everyone off and go be a hermit somewhere. Overall, I'm proud of you for standing up for yourself, recognizing that the treatment you were getting with your friends was not what you deserved and that you got the courage to end that relationship because that does two things. One, that shows that you're gonna stand up for yourself and that you respect yourself. And two, it tells the other person that whatever their behavior was, it wasn't acceptable and it gives them a chance to self-reflect and hopefully learn from that situation and grow and become a better person and not do it to the next person. And the sad truth is some people are just shit people. Some people just don't learn. They don't wanna be better. They just wanna be awful to others and you can't do anything about it. The only thing you can do is reflect on your behavior, reflect on your feelings, your thoughts, your emotions, and just try to do better. I really hope that you are able to pull something helpful out of this. I have done so many clips, like my jaw hurts from all the talking I've done. So I hope however this video comes out, you find something helpful in it, you find something motivating and encouraging from it, and I really hope nothing but the best for you because stuff that happens in high school, I promise you it is not the end of the world. I know it feels like a big deal because, oh my God, hormones are raging and everything is just a big deal in high school, but I promise you it is not. It only feels like a big deal because that's all you know. That is the extent of your life experience, school, okay? You have the rest of your entire life. And if you think about it, the number of years that you're in school will eventually be surpassed by the rest of your life. It's only gonna be a small fraction of your life. As long as you put in the effort to making good decisions for yourself, to trying to be a good person, and just really making the most out of your life, these high school years, grade school years, are gonna be nothing. I promise you that much. I really hope you don't allow these people to hold you back and that you finish out high school strong. You make the most out of the time you have left in school. Because trust me, when you are in school, that is the easiest time of your life. Once you start being an adult, now that shit's hard. Now this is the part that I'm really excited for, where I turn over the video to you. You who are watching, if you have any advice for her, if you have any experiences you wanna share that she can relate to and maybe help her, feel free to share it in the comments. She did leave me her email so that I can let her know this video is posted, so she will see your comments, okay? So if you have anything helpful for her, put it down below. If you have some sort of situation or something you want advice on that you want an unbiased opinion on, I will leave a link where you can submit it. Hopefully I did a good enough job in this video where people want to continue submitting so that we can keep this series going. I guess that's it for now, so see you next time.